influencers. What if you're trading services? What if? Yeah, they're all paid what to if play. Trading, now, trading services, services is compensation. Okay. Same thing. If you give them, because okay. you know these implants, generally there are disclaimers or disclosures that the influencer has to do. There's disclosures that you have to do, and you have to look at what they say and make sure it's compliant. None of these influencers do anything for free anymore. They're always compensated <laughs> yeah. something. You're allowed to pay influencers yeah. to come. You just got to follow the rules. So I'm not knocking that. That's fine. Another episode of Full Arch Advantage. I'm your host, Gary Bird. I'm the CEO of SMC National, where we provide predictable new patient flow for offices just like yours. And today, we got a special treat. We have Brian Kaleo, who's the director of Dicoma's DSO Industry Group. And he is going to share with us all the legal stuff that really a lot of people just miss, to be frank with you. We actually do a live Google search and find some legal problems with some of the things that people are representing online on billboards, and just the rules that people are breaking that can get you in a lot of trouble. And Brian goes into great detail about how to avoid that and what the next steps you should take if you are maybe not following the rules. So you're going to want to listen to this one. All right, Brian. So why don't you tell me how people are getting their marketing wrong from a legal perspective when it comes to full arch? Well, I mean, first of all, Gary, there's a lot of regulations you have to follow. And, you know, we could never hope to cover them all in, you know, our short time here. But the biggest ones, I mean, I mean, so I just I guess the first thing is there are regulations out there and you need to study your state specific dental advertising regulations before you do anything. And I, I kind of would be remiss if I didn't say that. But in particular, when we drill down to like full arch cases, there's three things that, you know, I, I see happening all all over and over again. The correlation between the health benefits and, um, you know, the implants. I mean, it, people always get that wrong. I mean, implants, in case anybody's wondering, because I've read all the literature, implants do not cure cancer. They do not prevent strokes and they do not, re- you know, they do not cure heart disease. OK, and I see that all the time. Now, what they do is most people that require a full mouth restoration, Gary, have inflammation. They have gum disease. Mm. It's very serious. And there are studies Sorry to disrupt the show, but I got something crazy to share with you. We are attempting to connect with all of our listeners. We have thousands of people that listen to this podcast, and we want to meet you in person. We have four events coming up, and I want to give you a discount code that you can use for the next week to save $300 off your ticket. The discount code is Gary Bird, and the link is going to be just down below. You can also go to smcnational.com forward slash events. I hope to connect with you in person and help each other grow our businesses. Can't wait to see you soon. That say that inflammation, not, you know, that maybe starts in the mouth and goes through your entire body can increase the instances of heart disease and potentially stroke and other things. But if your advertising campaign is get dental implants and you won't get a stroke, yeah, that's not really going to work. And you have to be really, really careful as to how you handle the correlation between implants and other health benefits and that, you know, or other medical conditions and things like that. That's one thing. Second thing is sort of accuracy. You read this, and if you go across and just Google in any city, you know, implants, you'll see a whole bunch of claims, and they can't all be right. One will say one in three people are missing a tooth. One will say one in two people. One will say one in five people are missing a tooth. Well, they can't all be right. Now, the CDC and other folks have really good statistics that sort of handle this type of stuff. But if you look at it, I don't know where folks are getting these statistics from, but the advertising regulations in every state require, at, you know, accuracy. And if you're trying to say, some, you know, just a simple thing like, you know, one in five people are missing a tooth and everybody's got this problem. Come into the center. You got to be accurate in how you say this stuff. And if you're not, then, you know, you're subject to, you know, discipline uh, by the dental board, you know, as a dentist. And then, the, you know, the last thing that I see all the time, I mean, I, there's lots of stuff, but maybe the third one that I see all the time is unjustified expectations, okay? If you get mm. dental implants, I understand, you know, your, your mouth, you know, you might look really bad. You might be missing lots of teeth. But just because all of a sudden you get a new set of teeth doesn't mean you're going to get a supermodel boyfriend or girlfriend, okay? You know, we can't guarantee <laughs> that stuff. So when we see these ads and it's like, I got dental implants and now they're like, they've got a perfect 
10 man or woman next to you. It's just not, you know, that, that's an unjustified expectation. Or sometimes you'll see somebody say something like, since I got my implants, I've made the most money I've ever made in my life. I mean, yeah, but implants don't lead to higher income. I mean, it's possible <laughs> That you were not realizing your potential because you lacked confidence and you were afraid to go out and interview and get a job. And now you got a full mouth restoration and you interviewed and you got the job and you're making more money than you did before. Like I could understand that sort of thing. But just saying, you know, I made the most money I ever made because I got implants. No, no. I mean. You know, so these unjustified expectations so, are another really big. So thing. I already know what I already know what people are thinking. I already know what people are going to say. Like marketers out there, they're like, "Well, we didn't say this. We have we have this patient who's saying yeah. this." Yeah. And, and, and I know what you're going to say. And I got the end. yeah. <laughs> so what you're talking about? No, because I hear that. I, I, you know, Gary, I've been doing this 28 yeah. years, so you're not going to say anything that I haven't heard. Like. 50 times this week, probably. But um, you're talking about testimonials and the rule on testimonials. I'm glad you actually mentioned that because that's another thing that I see. Maybe not quite as much as those other three, but another really big thing that I see. The rule on testimonials is you can't do through a patient testimonial what you otherwise wouldn't be allowed to do under the rules. So in other words, you can't get a patient to say, since I got my implants, I'm making lots of money now. You know, and you say, well, they said it. Not me. No, if you're adopting their statement, you can't use it. Like, and there's an important distinction. If a patient goes on Yelp or you know, I, I, Yelp is the one that comes to mind. I'm sure there's a lot of other platforms you know about that you can name, and they have nothing to do with you. They just went on this third party platform and said something. Probably they can say that because they're not the actual yeah. practitioner. They don't have a dental license. They're not subject to the dental board rules. And if that's really their opinion and you didn't put them up to it, you didn't pay them, you didn't consult with them. They really just said that on like a, I'm just using Yelp, for example, on a third party, yeah. you know, a message board of some sort, then yeah, probably that's okay. But if you take that testimonial and stick it on your website or stick it on Facebook and you start promoting that, you can't do it if it violates the rules. Now, if they said, Hey, mm-hmm. Dr. Gary Bird's a good doctor. He did a good job. He really cared about me and I had a good experience experience, by the way, there's nothing controversial about that claim. If they said that and you, you know, adopted that and put that on your website, you're probably fine. But if the patient said something that would otherwise violate the rules and you want to put it on your website or on Facebook and claim, well, I didn't say it, they said it. No, you're adopting their statement. So now you're on the hook for it. Yeah. What, what if you have something like, uh, even like a video? So uh, you pay $10,000, you fly a video crew out to this person's house, you film the patient, it's a real patient. And the patient's like, yeah, I got these new teeth. And now I got the most beautiful wife in the world. I make all this money now. And, and maybe it's true, right? So let's say it is true. And then you use that in your advertising. That's still not okay. Yeah, we'll be editing out like, those statements if I'm involved. I mean, you know, we'll have the film yeah, yeah. crew come out there and we usually record, you know, it might be a two or three minute spot and we'll record 20, 25 minutes of stuff. And more than likely, Gary, those statements will be edited out by the time we're done. We'll just have to select other parts of the interview that didn't violate the rules because, again, you're adopting the statement. You're using it in your yeah. marketing. Now, if the patient was like an influencer and you weren't because yeah. there's rules now around influencers. Influencers too. I don't know how much time we have, but if the patient yeah. was like, you know, a famous influencer, like one of my clients one time, I probably can't mention it on this, but it was a famous NFL star. Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to mention the name. They did implants for a famous NFL star, and without receiving a dime of compensation, that famous NFL star made some statements and promoted my client and said what a good job they did. And some of the things that the NFL star said violated the regulations, but we didn't pay him. He was just so happy with the implants. He did it completely on his own. That would be okay. But if we sent a film crew to that NFL star house and all of a sudden he's now endorsing our product and we're putting it on our website. Yeah, that's a big problem. Can't do that. Okay. That's really helpful. So you, so we have three categories, health benefits, accurate claims, and then outcomes. And then, I, and then I did exactly what you said. And I testimonials. Just you raised in. testimonials. That was the fourth one. And testimonials. Yes. Okay. And testimonials. That's like a loophole that everybody thinks they can hack into those yes. three, I think. Yes. And so I went and did exactly what you said. I just typed in dental implants 
And here's something that popped up in an ad, like first right away. It says, "Don't mention um, any names, Gary. Years. Let's not get anybody not, in trouble." I'm not. I'm not. I'm not yeah. I won't. I won't mention any names. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But I'm just going to read the text so you can you can tell me. It says, "$179 a month dental implant package, teeth in one day at one office." Is that an accurate claim? Well, I mean, it could be. I, I mean, I've, I've been, you know, reviewing full arch advertisements for like almost 20 years. So, you know, it could be. But, you know, what, you know, sometimes you've got to put a disclaimer in there saying qualified patients can get their teeth in one day after initial workup. Results may vary in individual cases. I mean, typically, that's another point. You got to have disclaimers in this stuff unless it's 100 percent of every patient you've ever seen in your entire life gets this then okay, you can say it. But if sometimes some patients may need bone grafts or, you know, they may be a difficult yeah. case and they can't get it in one day, you should never be saying just without a disclaimer, you know, one day everybody gets it. No, because we all know some patients need bone graft. Some patients don't have enough bone. There could be complications. You could have health issues, high blood pressure, diabetes, some smokers, some situation where, you know, we got to do more tests before you can get it in one day. Mm. So you got it typically... I mean, I know enough about, you know, one day implants because I've been doing it, almost, again, almost 20 years that you cannot guarantee that the general public can get it in one day. Some can, maybe even most can, but you can't guarantee that everybody in the general public can. So if what you read had no disclaimer and that was just what they were saying, yeah, that's not compliant. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. And so, I, I, I mean, I just click through on the website and I'm looking for disclaimers here and I don't see anything. Um, obviously, in the ads, it doesn't have any disclaimers because there's no room for that. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is that one of the things that's kind of messed up people is that we move from a TV and like print culture to a digital culture. Now, the thing that was cool about TV and print was you, it was much easier, I think, to stay compliant because you had... Uh, as long as you knew somebody like you that could help you stay compliant, you could just cram in all your compliance into the commercial or into the copy of the text. You just made a really small font and there was always room for it, right? In digital, on the other hand, you don't always have room for it, right? Like so a lot of times you have ads that people are just calling right from the ads and sometimes, or they see videos and they watch the videos and then they hit a button and they go over to make a phone call right away what tell me a little bit well, about you can put like small what you're print at the bottom of a video you could say you know some restrictions apply see website for details see see practice for details i mean it's not ideally i'd like to have the full disclaimer in there but if sometimes it's just not feasible and you can't do it you got to do something gary you got to at least say mm. some restrictions apply some limitations apply see website for details you know like if if you were the dentist i would say something like you know some limitations may apply see gary Bur dot com for details or something, you know, and you just yeah. you can jam that in so they know. And then you have a page where if they click on that page, some of my clients have a specific disclaimer page. So in the ad, if you click, you don't necessarily even go to the general website. You go to the disclaimer page and from the disclaimer page, you can get back to the general website if you want to schedule an appointment or do something else. But you go right to the disclaimer and it might say, you know, qualified patients can receive implants in one day after initial workup results may vary in in individual cases or something so that you read it and you know you know that it's not everybody a hundred percent of the time can get their implants in one day mm, okay what what other struggles have you seen with people legally moving from more of that tv world to the digital world what what kind of roadblocks are people running into yeah, I mean, you know, you like touched it. on the biggest one, disclaimers. You know, they think, you know, because I'll tell you, it's not an excuse when you're sitting in like a dental board meeting or an attorney general investigative complaint. Well, <laughs> you know, gee, judge, we didn't have room to put it there. So this was the best we can do. What they're going to say is you shouldn't have ran the ad then. I mean, it's, you know, you can't yeah. tell me because you didn't have room that justifies you running a misleading ad. If you don't got room, don't run the ad then. You know, that's what the answer is going to be. 
And so, you know, a lot of folks think just because of the limitations of the medium, like, you know, we don't have room. So I guess that just means we do whatever we think is best. No, no, that's not. I mean, that's not going to be a valid defense that because you didn't have room, you did whatever you wanted to do. You still have to follow the rules. So figuring out, you know, what needs a disclaimer, first of all, because not everything does, but, you know, figuring out mm-hmm. what needs a disclaimer, number one, figuring out how to do that disclaimer. I spend a lot of time when I'm doing compliance work for clients, sort of understanding the message and saying, which part is absolutely critical that you got to convey here? And which part can we maybe do on the phone when they call or later? You know, because mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. what you find is if we can get the critical piece in and the disclaimer, but we can't get the whole story in the disclaimer. in, So we have to make judgment calls that we have to say enough so that everybody's comfortable that, hey, if you're um, you know, a member of the public or a prospective patient and you're looking at this, you know, you get the, you know, at least enough of the gist of what we're trying to say, while at the same time seeing a disclaimer of some sort or getting access to a disclaimer so the ad is not misleading. That's what I spend most of my time doing. Got it. Now, you said that there are some new rules with influencers. So just so our audience uh, is aware. So what happens is there's dental offices. I actually just met with somebody in Southern California um, recently about this. And there was a dentist. He uh, had influencers come into his office. I don't know you know, how he encouraged them to come in, but they all came in. He had them all shoot videos about, hey, I'm going to the dentist. And in this particular office, they had teenagers all getting veneers. These are very well-to-do teenagers. Um, you know, ripping out all their perfectly yeah, healthy teeth. Yeah, that's terrific. Grinding in- down healthy teeth of like 15 yeah. and 16 year olds. <laughs> they just got their yep. permanent teeth and now you're grinding it down. That's terrific. But, you know, I yeah, shouldn't editorialize, I know, I know. Gary. I- <laughs> no, it, that's what exactly what I was thinking, right? So I'm just giving you like a real example of what, what people are doing out there. So they got these influencers to do that. Obviously, this generated a lot of uh, business for them. And it was driving in more teenagers to get veneers. So these again, people with money who are going, yeah, I want to go drop, you know, $20,000 on veneers. So I have this perfect smile. Um, so what are the rules around that kind of influencer marketing? Yeah. So, so listen, I know we probably got our own disclaimers on this that, you know, this is not legal advice. I'm not your lawyer, you know, but you can call me after and maybe make me your lawyer if you want. But right now, you know, don't rely on exactly, you know, what I'm saying. This is education so that you understand pitfalls. But, you know, we could do a whole segment of like an hour and a half on the new rules. But, you know, as you always do, you put me on the spot with a minute here and you want me just to cut through it. This is what I would say with influencers. If you are paying influencers, you are generally going to be on the hook for the stuff that they say under the new FTC uh, guidelines, Federal Trade Commission guidelines. And you have to be really careful and you got to disclose a lot of stuff like the the. the influencers have to disclose you're paying them. You have to disclose their paid spokesman. And then you have to see what they're saying and make sure it's compliant because you know how it is with these influencers. They'll get on TikTok or mm-hmm. something. And it's crazy. I mean, there's no limits to the imagination of the stuff that they say. <laughs> and if they're up there saying yeah. little green men from Mars came down and did this, I mean, you got to be like, no, I cannot you know, endorse that type of stuff um, if you're paying them. Now, if you're not paying them, and again, it, and I, you, you hardly see this anymore because what if, what if you're trading services? What if? Yeah, they're all paid to play. Trading trading services services is compensation. Same thing. If you give them, because you know, these implants, these full arch cases, Gary, you know, they're 30, 40, 50, 60 grand, depends where you go. Um, Yeah, if you were like, you know, there's an influencer and he didn't like his teeth and you were trading an arch for him and that's 30 grand. No, that's a paid spokes. I mean, that 100% counts. I mean, if you're Baskin Robbins and you gave him one free ice cream cone, you could argue that might be de minimis. You know, the guy like, you know, mint chocolate chip and you handed them one cone or something, you could probably say that's de minimis. It's not the end of the world. But you start trading dental services or full arch stuff. Yeah, this is like a really big problem. And um, 
uh, generally there are disclaimers or disclosures that the influencer has to do. There's disclosures that you have to do and you have to look at what they say and make sure it's compliant. Now, the last thing I was going to say, this almost never happens because it's all pay per play. But if an influencer really did just visit your practice and didn't get, you know, a penny of compensation or any services traded or anything and just honestly visited your office, you know, almost like the NFL player I was saying a few minutes ago yeah. that basically just had a wonderful experience and wanted to go on TikTok and say how wonderful you are, even if they said questionable things, if you really have no business relationship whatsoever with that person, then that's probably okay. They may have to deal with it if they said misleading stuff, but you as the dental practice wouldn't have to deal with it. But you know the way it is, Gary. None of these influencers do anything for free anymore. They're always compensated <laughs> yeah. something. So if it's a usual, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. That's compliant. I mean, you're allowed to pay influencers yeah. to come. You just got to follow the rules. So I'm not knocking that. That's fine. But if it's the usual customary influencer relationship where you're paying them or they're getting free services or something's happening like that, you got to follow the rules. Interesting. Okay. That's, that's really, really helpful. I wouldn't even have thought about those things, you know, when those, the influencers are like, Hey, I'm coming here and I'm getting these implants done. Like they have to disclose somewhere that, and I'm getting paid for this. You know, this was a paid and, and sometimes people do do that. Some influencers are very upfront with that, and but some aren't, and they don't have a website that you're clicking through to with disclaimers and things like that. So, uh, definitely that's a big, big one that I would grab. The other one I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, you're driving down, I'm sure you've driven through like LA and other big yeah. cities and you see these big billboards and they just got these crazy prices on them and these crazy pictures with implants on them. Is there any, any rule? I've always just think in my head, I'm like, is there, is there rules on any of this kind of stuff? Yes. Or, or what, are, what are your thoughts on that? There's lots of rules. And by the way, I don't drive in LA anymore. I Uber in LA, which for purposes of <laughs> yeah, this okay. discussion is more important <laughs> because I can read the billboards. When you're driving, you might crash yep. or something. But now I'm sitting there and somebody else is doing all my driving for me pretty much in the whole state of California. So I got plenty of time to look at these billboards and read you know everything that's up there. And yeah, there's a lot of regulations. And basically, like, you know, you seen it you know something stupid like you know 99 dollar implants and that's all it says yeah that's that's like a big problem typically there are requirements to disclaim it that if 99 dollars like i'm just making this up if 99 dollars is per tooth you know i've seen people do it that way where yeah. it's like 99 dollars but it's really 99 dollars per tooth so it ends up being thousands of dollars by the time you're done or something like that you gotta say like 99 dollars per tooth or only includes this doesn't include that and if you yeah. just have a billboard generally particularly in california i'm only mentioning it because you mentioned la they got a lot of restrictions yeah. in california on everything if you got an ad somewhere in california <laughs> that just the only tagline is you know probably wouldn't be 99 dollars, but maybe like a thousand dollar implants or something like that if it's not the whole case for i mean if you're really going to give like nobody would but if you're really going to give the whole case for a thousand dollars and fine you know good for you that that's great but if if you're not, and there are all sorts of limitations and restrictions on that, and the only thing you put on your billboard to attract attention was a thousand dollar implants, that is not compliant. And you know, the attorney general and his staff and the members of the dental board, they drive around LA too and they read these things. And when they do, they often call that number and see what you say, and then they use it as a means to file a complaint and investigate you. Wow. Okay. That's, that's really, really helpful. Um, because there, there's all kinds of that stuff going on. I say it every day yeah, there are. down here and there's, 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 uh, obvious, and that's like in plain sight. Sometimes with the digital ads, you can kind of hide cause you're only targeting a certain small group of people and it's, it's much easier to kind of hide that you yeah, might it's, not be it's following not really rules defensible. on those, those. What, what you have going for you. I mean, you know, I can't again, endorse people violating the rules. I'm an attorney. I've de de dedicated yeah. my whole career to compliance, but there are limited staffing issues, just like dental offices are having limited staffing. The attorney general and the dental board are suffering from limited staffing. So they can't get to everybody. They can't investigate everybody. But if you do get caught, it's really indefensible what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I'm just, I'm just saying from a standpoint of you might have an ad that only touches a hundred people that, that is illegal versus an ad that goes on a billboard that's touching 
millions of people every single day or hundreds of thousands of people every single day. And that's, that's obviously going to get you in a lot more trouble, a lot faster. Um, and, and so that actually brings up my last question I wanted to ask you. So when somebody slaps up one of these billboards that aren't following the rules, why, why, let's, why isn't that getting popped? Like, why isn't that getting in trouble? Is it just because the dentist hasn't reported it to the dental board yet? Or is there some other way that somebody gets caught or get in trouble? Well, you know, that's what I meant. I mean, there's limited staffing, unfortunately, you know, the attorney general and the dental board and the other regulators, they can't get to everybody. I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, there's no, if you're doing it, you're clearly violating the rules. And to be clear, everybody listening, you shouldn't do that. You should get an attorney or read the rules yourself, but make sure you're in compliance with everything. Cause I can't ever endorse not doing it, but as just a practical matter, like if you ask me, Gary, how come if we're looking at the 405 down there, everybody that goes a hundred miles an hour doesn't get pulled over. Yeah. They, they can't get to everybody. I mean, I don't endorse people going a yeah, hundred miles get- an hour, but we all know some people will get away with it. You know, sometimes when they pull you over, you're like, Hey, I was following that other guy. And the cops like, well, you might've been, but I didn't get him. I got you too bad. You know, it's the same thing with this. I mean, there's some yeah. number of people that just luck, you know, they'll, they'll get away with it. It doesn't make it right. And it's not defensible what they're doing, but the regulators can't get to everybody. Cause that's what I hear. You know, it's funny. you we were going through what I hear. Another thing that I hear all the time is, well, the guy across the street or the girl across the street or my competitors doing it. And you're (laughs) absolutely right. If that's your position, I'd say two things. One, you are absolutely right. We could go through, we don't really have phone books anymore. I was going to make an outdated comment like that, but we could go through you know, the digital phone book or the website or you know directories or whatever we have, and you'll find tons and tons of people that are not compliant. But, you know, my mom and probably your mom, Gary, told you somewhere two wrongs don't make a right at some point. You heard that once or twice when you were growing (laughs) up. That's all I would say here, really. I mean, yes, I never question. You can find lots and lots of noncompliance and you may find you know, noncompliance, uh, even in your, uh, your city or your location or on your block where, you know, the dentist across the street is doing this wrong, but you know, that won't be a defense. If somebody files a complaint against you and you say, well, everybody's doing it, they'll say, well, I guess we'll have to go after everybody, but right now we got you here and, you know, we're going to go after you. And, you know, sometimes there's a double standard. If you're just a solo practice, again, I can't endorse a solo practice violating the rules. But sometimes if you're like one office, you know, they're not going to get to you as quickly as if, you know, you got 20 offices or 15 offices and you're advertising more conspicuously. That's just the way it is. But the way this Mm. happens is the dental board or the attorney general or the regulators, they drive around, they look at billboards, they can do it on their own. If they see it, your competitors are allowed to turn you in. If you're co- Sometimes if your competitors are violating the rules, you might see a situation where they're like, hey, nobody rat anybody out. Let's just leave it that way. But your competitors <laughs> that are following the rules, they have every right to look at you and say, hey, we're, we're going through great trouble. And a lot of the big private equity backed platforms I represent, we have to follow the rules. We are absolutely not going to be violating yeah. rules. So we follow the rules. And when we see people that don't follow the rules, we turn them in or we sue them or we file complaints against it. So your competitors are absolutely allowed you know, to turn you in. Patients are certainly allowed to turn you in and say, or even in most states, any member of the public, I mean, that drives up the street that just says this isn't right. They don't have to be a patient because these regulations are to protect the public. So any member of the public, even if they have perfect teeth, never got implants, don't want to get implants, but just looked at it and said, hey, this is wrong. They're allowed to file a complaint. So, you know, you can get a lot of complaints from a lot of different places on this. Awesome. Well, this has been really, really insightful. As always, Brian, you're willing to take a position. I know legally there's like all these other things to worry about, but I love the way that you're able to break it down in a consumable way for people like myself and the audience to listen to and go, okay, I know what I need to fix. I know the right direction I need to start moving. If someone wants to reach out to you and get like really specific help on how to actually 
follow all these laws and make sure that they're up to speed? How, how can they get a hold yeah, of you? Yeah, you know, our website, Dykema, D-S-O, D-Y-K-E-M-A-D-S-O.com is one good way. You know, my email, bkaleo at dykema.com is another great way. And email me and we can set up a Zoom call or a phone call or something and figure it out. You know, this is something I feel strongly about. You really, you know, if you're going to go out and substantially advertise and your business model Model is going to depend on direct to consumer advertising directly to the public. You got to be compliant. You really do, or you're going to run into problems. And the problems can be significant enough. They can shut your operation down. There could be big fines and things levied against you. It's just that sort of thing, Gary, where, you know, I'm not trying to make this a marketing thing. I'm really not. But, and you don't got to hire me, but you got to yeah. hire somebody that knows what they're doing here if you're mm-hmm. doing this or you're taking a big oversized risk. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on today. Very, very helpful. Well, thank you, Gary. Always a pleasure.